Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas and today we're going to be looking at a tool that I've been wanting to use already for like the past couple of months. It was acquired by Figma, I think around two months ago. It's a tool called Weavy and it's basically an AI node-based platform that gives you access to different AI models and different editing tools. So for example, you have like 3D editing tools. As you can see, you can get an image and turn it into a 3D object. You can download that object. You can combine the 3D object with like a different type of image and you can like add, add text prompts as well and then eventually create like a video. And I'm particularly interested in the different types of branded branded assets that we can create, right? Like whether it be, you know, product mockups or logos or maybe like little short videos that we can create with a specific logo or style from your brand. For example, I thought this was pretty cool. If you go to framer.com slash store and you scroll down, you have these different products, right? You can buy a shirt, you can buy a sweater. And if you hover over one of these products, right, we get this really cool ease in, ease out animation that kind of moves the, f the fabric as well. It has like a very nice subtle animation. And these are like the examples of the things that I'm telling you about that we can create like these branded, branded, nice, crisp experiences using Weavy. So you get stuff like this, right? With the cap, with the sweater, with the stickers like this. And actually, before we get started, I'd love to invite you guys to my Discord community where a bunch of different startup founders, designers, developers from all around the world, we get together every single weekday to talk about different tools, topics, challenges. So if you guys are interested in joining these conversations, link to the Discord is down in the description below. Anyways, this is how the starting you know, dashboard looks like once you're logged in, you have all of these different workflow workflow libraries and tutorials up here. The tutorials are great, actually. I, I binge watched them and I learned a lot. I had to watch them again, you know, just to kind of understand the workflow, but it's very, very helpful to start off with, with watching these tutorials. And what's great is that you can click on any of these libraries and copy them to your, to your dashboard, right? So for example, this one, copy of Weavy. This is a, a one that, that I basically just copied and it comes with a prompt. So this is like a text prompt. It, it has this file upload so you can upload your own logo. I uploaded Magic Path logo. You can upload like a primary color over here, secondary colors. And then these are like image iterators, which basically is a, just a group of images. And it all goes through this LLM that basically creates the style of, of this. So this is like one big prompt. So if I were to just click on this and click on show more, you can see the whole thing. And then basically that comes over here and this and this combine to create this. And what you do is you can just select all of this and click on run selected. And once that's done, you can basically see that we have our primary color, which is this yellow color. And then we have all of these different images that it generates. And if I were to, for example, scroll in here, you can see that the logo, you can't really see it from here, but the logo matches the material of this mug. I go, for example, to the notebook, it matches that, that material as well. The hat as well, you can see the stitches on the logo. So overall, it does a pretty impressive job with doing the, these like different branded product mockups. Or you can, for example, take a simple logo, like for example, this one, the Magic Path logo, logo and we can create different styles like clean, minimalistic, organic, muted, lime, green, black, white, uh, plastic, uh, iridescent st statue where we can then concentrate these different styles into one prompt that we can then combine with this other main prompt, which is a clean, minimalistic, organic plastic statue with highlights cast in a mute, muted lime, green, black, and white tones. So you can obviously see that it has like these very unique colors on the on the logo and you can even give it like more image models as you can see flux 2 pro hicks field image and basically just add these same connectors as it does over here we're going to get different types of results very very interesting some with better quality than than others obviously i think for starters it's best to just test out all of these different models and see which one is your your favorite for your for your need and then we have more complicated workflows where you actually give in the different inputs about your brand. So for example, brand name, um, what is you know your brand all about, what's your target audience, different colors, an image reference of your product. If you don't have a color palette, you can ask Weeby to create the color palette for you. For example, this is a you know example of based on the inputs that you gave it before of you know what type of business it is, who it's for. You can use an LLM to generate a color palette for you using GPT image one. Same thing goes with the logo. You can ask it based on that, you know, 
as you can see over here, you are a logo prompt builder. You receive a brand identity object containing the following fields. So it basically digests the context of this previous prompt flow and understands all of this and creates a logo based off of that. And same thing with product photography. As you can see, you are an award-winning commercial photographer renowned for producing brand-defining images. Your assignment is to craft one text-to-image prompt that describes the perfect photograph for the brand materials provided. Again, again referencing these main um, context points that we provided before. And then you can provide the real your real product image. In this case, it can be sunglasses where you can then remove the background and then add this white uh, white color as basically it's just an image of a white, you know, nothing else. And you can add that as a background and then basically just replace like one of these generations from before that it generated from the photograph, uh, you know, flow and replace it with our product, right? Which is these graphics. And then basically add text that this AI Weavy has done before in the, in the past over here and basically use this like combining all of these flows to create like a nice little poster, branded poster that you can basically add to your website regarding a new collection, for example. And if you want me to do something like this from scratch, please let me know down in the comments below what type of image you want me to, you know, generate. Please be my client. Let me know what type of, of product you want me to kind of generate for you. And I'd be happy to make a video on that in the next uh, couple of days. And then finally, another example using Nano Banana Pro, which it's, it's a little bit expensive. It takes you like 15 credits per run. Um, when using this model, but basically, you know, you can add a text prompt over, over here, generate an image of a Balenciaga style lime colored dyed shirt with the logo printed on the shirt. So this is our logo as a reference, right? You have these two connectors over here. Then you can add another text prompt, generate a model wearing the shirt, Balenciaga photo shoot style, runaway photo shoot. And basically we get the same type of style, same clothing and everything because this is using its this image reference. And using this prompt, we get even the same model, I believe, um, and same shirt. And then basically, you know, add this, add, add this shirt to the model, which is basically this exact model. So it's basically using the same uh, reference, but now with a new model. And we get this and we can, you know, use this um, image model called C-Dream V4. And then eventually we can create this nice, like, little mock-up of a model wearing our shirt. And eventually you can add this to, like, some type of e-commerce store or like some nice, like, I don't know, section of a website for an e-commerce store. By the way, if you guys are interested in these topics when it comes to using AI to create images or to create branded assets, and you also want a very sweet website, I definitely recommend you guys check out Vlogs Themes, which is a framer template agency. They have really nice websites with really cool transitions, as you just saw. And they have these little sections over here that you can basically use to basically replace with your own branded assets like we're seeing in this video. So for example, this one is called Sadewa. Their logo looks like this, like a backward backwards S. And they basically created this branded asset. And this is like a really cool example of what you can use. And not only do they have a great website, but they also have a ton of helpful resources, even if you are a complete beginner when it comes to building out websites in Framer. As you can see over here, they have a pre-launch checklist SEO booster, which is crazy good. It's a very underrated thing that they have. I think only they have. I've never seen it with any other template, honestly. They have an AI search booster, high conversion copy machine, Figma file, you know, apart from just the framer file and the AI assets guideline, which we're also talking about today. So feel free guys to check out their terrific templates down in the description below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and continue with our video. Now, going back to that framer example from the beginning, this one, let's start something from scratch, right? We saw all of these built out examples and I played around with them and kind of added like a custom logo and everything. So let's go ahead and try to build this from scratch. Now, what we can do is we can open a new Weavy file. So I'm gonna click on create new file. And now we start from scratch and I'm not gonna do it with the framer one. I'm, I wanna do it with something else, maybe like with Nike, right? This nice Wembanyama shirt. I can click on copy image. We can go back to Weavy. I can click on paste. And this is how we bring in our first image reference, right? This is our first initial image reference that we're going to use. And now we have to kind of think of the different steps that we might need. I'm thinking that we probably need a text. So I'm just going to right click over here in the canvas and search for text. So we have text over here. And for the text, we could just start off with something simple just to test out the waters 
rotate this the let's not put sweater rotate the shirt 180 degrees in an ease in ease out motion for a duration of 2.5 seconds we might need to add a little bit more context as to you know how the rotation should go should it be like you know uh, on its x-axis or on its y-axis maybe it kind of understands that this is a shirt so let's just start off with like very simple and then we can look for video models so generate from text or image generate from video lip sync enhance video so let's just go ahead and choose generate from video and i want to maybe try a few ones right like we this is the whole point of this is just to kind of test out the waters and see what works well. So I'm gonna choose Runway, I'm gonna choose Kling, I'm gonna choose Vio, and I'm gonna choose Sora. And we're gonna start connecting these different guys everywhere. And for example, you can see that I'm connecting it here and here. The text also goes over here. Some of them have a little bit more of an input. For example, for the Vio one, we have the first frame and the last frame. I'm actually gonna add this as the last frame as well because that's what we want. We want it to end in that original view. And here we also have the spot for negative prompting. So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna say run selected. And this is basically gonna run everything um, that I'm asking for. And it's gonna cost 366 credits, pretty expensive. Um, but let's see, actually let's delete this first node because it was asking me for in a video URL. Let's just run these. And my goal here is just to kind of see the the different results and, and, and see which one gives us the best results and work off of that, right? Because we're probably gonna have to use some uh, additional prompting to refine it. At least that's my guess, so let's see. So this one seems, the aspect ratio seems a bit off. I wanna make sure that the aspect ratio is correct. So let's just choose resolution like this, I would say. Let's make it like this, run again. And this one we also have to kind of uh, fix the aspect ratio over here, resolution, 1080p, perfect, run selected. And runway gives us this. It's not, I think the physics are is pretty good, but it's not really understanding. It's kind of hallucinating a bit. As you can see, it turns around and then it shows me the front again. And then it shows me the back. And then it shows me the front. So I guess, I guess it works for like the second, um, the last part of it, but not really for the beginning. And we get these results as well. So this one seems pretty good, but it, it stops in the back. I don't know why. Um, I guess it's because we don't really have the, the end frame. That's what I really like about this one. This one also seems pretty good, but I'm gonna show you. It stops here and then it randomly comes back over here. So it's a little bit weird. Maybe we have to kind of run it again or we have to enhance the prompt a little bit. And maybe I have to just say 360 degrees, not 180, I don't know why I said 180. 360 degrees, let's go ahead and let's run this one again. I'm very interested in running this one. All right, and finally we get a cool result looking like this. And by the way, I would definitely choose standard. It's gonna take 320 credits, but it does do a great job. So what I wanna do now is just download this, this content, right? Just download it to my documents. And this is basically how it would look like at the end if you replace it in the Nike website. Obviously a little bit of adjustment having to, uh, needed with, with the aspect ratio of this video, but this is like a quick little glimpse. As you can see, when, once the video ends, like there's like a nice little um, stop that happens and like the texture of the of the shirt kind of swings a little bit as you can see. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you all have any questions or anything, just let me know down in the comments below. And like always, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.